Well, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Um, if you like what you see, please, as I always say, please like, please subscribe, hit the little bell icon, leave some comments down below. Would be great because, I, as always, I like to, to hear what you have to say. Uh, pass some comment whether you like it, if you don't like it, etc., etc., etc. Now, I have come this week quite a long way from home. It's taken me the best part of four hours to get here, but we came up here on um, New Year's Day. No intention of vlogging, just for a day trip, and I thought, why not come up here for a vlog? So, yeah, four hours away, and I've come to, I don't know if you can see that in the distance there, Glen Finnan. Can you see the viaduct behind me? I'm not sure if you can. But that's where we are anyway, Glen Finnan. Um, I'm going to do a circular walk. Try and grab a few shots while I'm here. Um, so, start off by going up and under the viaduct, get the classic shot, obviously from the viewpoint up the top. Um, it's only January, so the Jagabite's not running, so there'll be no steam trains in this video, I'm afraid. But I already shot the Jagabite back in October 2020 when we did the Great Glenway, so I'll put a link to that up there somewhere if you've got a real. Uh, passion for steam trains but in the meantime let's press on this way okay so I'm set up now for my first shot uh, what I've done is I've walked up the path teach you up beneath the viaduct just kind of down there um, and then just after you get past the viaduct before you get to a gate uh, there's another wee path which leads off back under the viaduct again to this kind of viewpoint um, where you can see, if I turn around, you can see right around the kind of whole length of the viaduct from here and it's kind of elevated position, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take a shot. It's too big to fit in a single photograph. I did take one earlier, I'll show you that now. Um, yeah, so you can see that's just too big, you can't fit the whole thing in. So, surprise, surprise, I'm going to take a pano because uh, you know I like my panos. So, and I've got the, this thing out so I can actually share with you what it is we're looking at. So, uh, this could be awkward because I've got you on hand. I've got you on the, um, on the selfie stick here and I'm holding this thing in the other hand. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use to, um, to change the settings. So this could be awkward. But bear with me and we'll get there. So, as you can see, let me just uh, turn around. I'll hold that in that hand there. Uh, loosen that off with this hand here. And you can see that this here is the kind of shot we're looking at. Oh, I'm going to squint. There we go. Right. Okay, right along there. And I'll try and get some of this, uh, the path going down the hill as well. Okay, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my the monitor down here. So I can see what I'm looking at. The back of the screen, if I turn around, the back of the screen is blank. And I'll get my picture here. All right. So, excuse me while I look down. And don't, pay, don't pay any attention whatsoever while I'm making all these settings. So, yeah, okay, probably just swung that in front of my own face there, but not to worry. <laughs> Awkwardness. Okay, so, uh, if we just take a quick look at the settings, I've, I've got it set up now already, I've got it set level, so that when I turn it around you can see that the, the display there, I think I showed you already, is, uh, is flat, stays flat all the way around. Now, um, what else do I want to do? Let's check the display here. Okay, so we're looking now at the histogram uh, down at the bottom there. And you can see it's actually slightly overexposed there. So I'll turn that down. I'm sitting at one eighth of a second. So let's make it turn the right way, Douglas. What's that? About one thirteenth of a second or so. I'm just trying to get myself into the picture here. About one thirteenth of a second or so. We'll probably do it. Let me just swing it around. See if it changes. Oh, we're overexposed there, so... Turn it down again, one fifteenth. Mm, and again, we're overexposed. So, one twentieth of a second. Uh, the more I turn it around, the longer it's going to be. So, that's probably pointing at the extreme of where I want it to go. Let me just turn it. 1 25th of a second, that should probably do it. I'm going to bracket anyway, so if there's any, if there's any issues, then that should pick it up. 
if I overexpose ever so slightly. Okay, so I'll just set my display back to that again so that you can see it. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start round about there, turn it round, about a third, take another shot, about a third, take another shot, and a third. Don't know how many shots it's going to be, six or seven, something like that. Take it out to about maybe there. Then I can edit it all, crop it down in Photoshop and uh, I'll show the finished photo when I get it. Okay, so I'll just start now. Here we go. One, two, three. Click. So we're moving on from the viaduct now and I hope this camera still works because uh, a girl asked me to take a picture of her and her boyfriend in front of the viaduct with her phone and she says to me, do you mind if I just move your stuff there? You know, the camera bag was lying down on the ground and uh, this camera was lying on top of it while I was uh, taking the panel shot there. I said, yeah, no problem. So she picked up the bag and uh, camera went flying, of course. So, seems to still work, hopefully. So, I'm doing that thing again, where I'm walking and talking. I've got the microphone just here, and uh, it makes me sound like Darth Vader. I'm not as out of puff as I really sound. <laughs> so anyway, as, as I was saying earlier on, um, we're doing a kind of circular walk, or I am. Nobody here but me today. Um, so what takes us from the viaduct, which is behind me somewhere, can I see it? Yeah, you might see the distance, can't tell. Um, and we walk along, there's Loch Shield there, which is also in Harry Potter, and you can probably see the monument in front of it, might get a shot of that later. Um, aye, but you walk along to Glenfinnan Station, and there's various viewpoints along the way so you've probably seen all of these shots before that I'm going to take but uh, not to worry because my version of them so what uh, do you know I think it's the first time I've been up here when it's not been raining so lucky I caught it on the day of a vlog anyway um, yeah press on and uh, we'll get to the, the next shot which I think is a viewpoint across Loch Shield. I walked along about 20, 30 metres beyond the Loch Shield viewpoint. And the reason being, if you come up here and you go to the viewpoint, the thing that always happens with viewpoints has happened, which is that they've allowed trees to grow right in front of it, so you can't actually see the view. So I've come a little bit further along, and the view is actually a whole lot better. So let me just switch the movie on here, like that, okay? And you can see what I'm looking at. Um, 
So we're looking down on Loch Shiel. Uh, we've got this island. I've got no idea what the islands up here are called, but there's this island smack bang in the middle here. So I've got that sitting on the rule of thirds. I've got the hill behind it, or the mountain behind it, sitting on the other rule of thirds. Down here, you can probably just make out is the Glenfinnan Monument, which is also sitting more or less on the rule of thirds up here. Um, which is enough to get going with, I think. Okay, now let me just try spinning the polarizer. I think it's probably as polarized as it's going to get. Yeah, see that starts to get brighter again when I do that. So I'm just going to turn it back a wee bit there. We're facing almost directly into the sun, so I don't think we're going to get much in the way of polarization, but it's there anyway, in case I need to use it. So that's the shot. All right, so let me just switch the movie off again. Okay, I'll focus. I'm going to pull focus in on the um, on the monument, I think. Down there. And that's it. Here we go. One, two, three. Click. So I'll swap my lens over now. I'm on the, the 200mm lens, as you can see, nice long lens. Um, and I've got it fully extended. I say 200mm, it's about 210 in point of fact. Uh, this is the, the Sony SEL, was it SEL P7210, something like that. Um, which I've said before on these vlogs, it's not the greatest lens in the world. Um, when it's fully extended, like it is just now, it's not particularly sharp. But I'm going to get the shot anyway. I keep saving up for. A new lens. I've, I've got my eye on one, but uh, quite an expensive one. But every time I get enough cash, something goes wrong with the car, and I need to need to get it repaired. I don't. It's quite annoying. It's just like fate says you're not getting a new lens. You haven't haven't been good enough to get a new lens. So one of these things. I'll get it eventually. I'm sure. Anyway, so yes, I've got the 200 mil on, and let me just show you what I'm looking at here. I'll put the movie on. We're looking at the Glenfinnan Monument which I'm sure you could pick up the picture of this thing down here. Uh, I can't get my finger out here close enough so you can point at it. But take my word from it, the, the monument itself, I've got it sat on the rule of thirds with the soldier on top, um, sitting right in the top intersection, in the top right, and the kind of circle around the bottom of it is, is through the, um, the bottom right intersection. Not a great deal happening on the, uh, the other two intersections, but you've got to work with what you've got. So. That's what we'll do, what I'm going to take. The monument was kind of built um, in 1815. You'll probably see it's looking a bit squint in the picture. It was built by a rank amateur whose name I can't remember, but when he built it, he built it squint. And uh, it's, it's, it leans slightly. Uh, so the, yeah, the picture's straight, but the monument is squint. Take my word for it, honest. Um, it's supposed to represent the position where Bonnie Prince Charlie came ashore in, in 1745, I'm going to say 1945, I don't know why. Uh, aye, 1745 to, to kick off the last Jacobite rebellion. Um, and he was quite successful at it and then uh, got down to England, uh, heard that there was someone, the, the, basically the, the government forces fed him false information and uh, he ran away even though he didn't need to. And he was then pursued up the country and um, defeated at Culloden. Now, I did shoot a video up at Culloden once before. I'll put the link up there somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's that's one end of, of his journey. This is the other end. Okay, so yeah, let's just grab that shot. Uh, yeah, focusing in on that, I'm focused on the monument itself. Let me switch the movie off. Okay, I'm in aperture priority because uh, really I see no need. Uh, if the shutter speed is not important, there's no point putting it into manual, is there? So I just go to aperture priority. I'm sitting at an aperture of f9, which has given me 1 15th of a second, ISO 100, and that's that. So, yeah, here we go. One, two, three, click.
arrived at the, the third and final viewpoint there and the view it's called the station viewpoint you can't see the station because of trees um, the view out across Loch Shiel is very much the same as what I took earlier on so took a couple of shots you'll have seen them there um, but I didn't bother talking you through them because what would be the point just repeating myself anyway so yeah we're heading down the hill now towards Glenfinnan station it's not been an especially long walk I think we're talking a grand total of maybe a mile if that um, you just climb up from the um, from the viaduct and then takes you across the hillside and then descends down towards the station so that's that now after that it curves around through Glenfinnan itself so there may be some chances for some other photographs down there so we'll see what we get but in the meantime let's just head down to the station okay I've walked down from the station now um, and this will be the last shot of the day for a couple of reasons one there's not a great deal worth taking pictures of down here and for two I've just had to change the battery on my Alpha 6400 and I'm using the last of the four batteries I have with me and it's my I think it's an eight year old Sony battery so it's not the greatest battery that I own so I really need to replace it I just haven't got around to doing that yet but anyway what I'm looking at here having walked down this road behind me what I'm looking at is this church up on the hill up here, do you see it behind me? about there-ish ish yeah, the picture get dark, there we are up on the hill, so it's a church up on the hill the problem I've got with it if I turn around again, you see all these trees that are there, and there's also telegraph wires getting in the way as well, now I could walk across or climb across, there's a burn right in front of me here, I could jump across that and then go onto the ground across the other side but it looks kind of marshy and boggy and I don't fancy it I'm not wearing walking shoes, I'm just wearing uh, walking sorry, I'm not wearing walking boots, I'm just wearing walking shoes so I don't fancy that, so what I've got is I've got the camera right down low so it's poking up between the trees I mean I could use the trees to frame it I guess but there's a telegraph pole in the way as well so to avoid that I'm zoomed in, I'm right down low and if I switch on the movie uh, oh, I'll put it into movie mode first Okay, if I switch on the movie there, you'll see I've pretty much managed to avoid the telegraph pole just by zooming in and getting down low. And it's quite nice seeing the church up there on the hill like that. So, that's the shot. Um, again, we're looking at a rule of thirds. We've got the corner of the church just sitting here on that top rule of thirds. We've got the line, of the, the, the corner of the church is heading down just on that right hand side there. That's the composition. And the hill in behind it as well, that mountain. No idea what it's called. But yeah, so that's our shot. Um, I'll probably turn this down to a 4x5 because there is a wee bit of that telegraph pole just creeping in at the side there and it's pushing 70 mil. Um, I'll bring it back just a wee bit just because 
that top cross on the church has disappeared off the top of the picture. I just noticed that just there. So pull it back. The telegraph pole is in the way, but we'll fix that in post just by cropping it out. Okay. And that is that. That's my shot. Okay, so I'll switch the movie off. There. He said. I'm going to go back into Aperture Priority again because there's absolutely no reason not to be. Um, try not to kick your bag, Douglas, while you're there. You can't see everything at my feet here because there's an occasional car comes past and I don't want all my gear to get run over. Uh, yeah, so that's giving me F4, no, quarter of a second, I'm sorry, at F10. I'm going to focus on the cross at the top of the church, up there, and that's it. One, two, three, click. So that's my final shot in the bag there, I'm going to call it a day at that. It's not too far back to the car park now, it's just along the road a bit. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you've liked what you've seen, as always, please like, please subscribe, hit the little bell icon. Uh, where's my finger there? Down in that corner there. Uh, if you want to get notified of, of what I'm doing every single time I release something. Um, yeah, and that's that. Leave some comments because it's always nice to hear comments. I'm happy to take critical ones as well as uh, as well as nice ones. Um, if you don't like what you see, let me know. If you do like what you see, let me know even more. That would be great. Uh, yeah, so that's it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Cheers.